Danke, Kirsten. Danke, Philemon. Philemon, danke, Bruno. Free, free, free. Free the refugees. 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 The gold. It looks like decorations. It look like it looks like it should be for a party. These gold wrappers here. They're actually emergency blankets that you often see on the U.S.-Mexican uh, border in the detention camps in the Mediterranean with folks who have been saved <clears throat> by humanitarians. And we want to live in a world where we don't have to look at these, where this is not a, 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 a sad excuse for a blanket, where it's not wrapping children, but instead it's their parents' arms wrapping them and holding them tight. We want to live in a world where people can move across borders. And in fact, in Europe, we know we can go to, you can go to France, you can go to Italy. You cross right across that border now. And we want to expand that. We want to be able to go um, to Afghanistan or to Libya or to Syria or to Iraq just as easily as we can go uh, to Amsterdam for the weekend. I want to return now to the U.S., um, <clears throat> which is the reason for our, our gathering here this evening to demand an end to the camps, detention camps, concentration camps, kinder camps. And I want to also <clears throat> remind everyone that as the U.S. Trump administration announced the ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement, will be conducting raids on immigrant families. In fact, they've announced it, and they're going after people on Twitter who are sharing that information. They're going to people's doors, they're going to people's schools, they're following people on their way to work. And they even have instructions that if parents are with their children, they should try and wait so the children are in another area or another room so they can go grab the parents while, while the children are occupied doing other things. How do we explain this? Here we are, we're standing here in Berlin, we're standing here in Germany, we know that, we know that the Gestapo went door to door and rounded up political dissidents and rounded up Jews, and here we have in the, in the United States, Trump administration, the ICE, American Gestapo, rounding up undocumented people simply for not having papers. There's no other way to say it. And we also have to remember that there are folks, of course, who didn't make it into the U.S., who didn't make it across the border, who died because they didn't have access to water or food or they, they were exposed to the elements or they, or they drowned. Borders are violence. And so we want to remember the people who didn't make it across, the people who have died in the camps. And I want to ask, Are we at the reading of the names? Okay, I'm gonna step back. We are gonna read names to remember the people who did not make it, but first I want to introduce Adam Wilkins, who's gonna be speaking about um, human rights. Adam. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm an American living in uh, Berlin. Uh, I'm very I'm very concerned about human rights in general, and I would like to suggest that what we need to concentrate on is what we can do about these terrible situations we've been talking about. What I'm going to propose is actually something for the medium and long term, but I think it's relevant. And what I'd like to do is to remind you of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, most of you have probably heard of it, but probably don't know much about it. It was a document that was framed in 1948, more than 70 years ago, in the aftermath of World War II. 
It was framed by a prominent group of lawyers uh, and other people. It was led by Eleanor Roosevelt. And what I would like to propose is that, in fact, this document, which is often criticized as a product of its times and limited, actually has great potential if people remember it and cite it. Uh, in fact, every human rights violation you can think of that's going on in the world today is a violation of one or more articles in the UDHR. And I'm starting a, a small group uh, that uh, has members in several countries. We are going to work uh, to get human rights organizations around the world to uh, lobby their governments uh, to create pressure to reaffirm the UDHR. Uh, it sounds very abstract, it might even sound empty, I think not. If enough people remember the UDHR and cite it, it will have uh, force and power. And let me just uh, mention uh, the relevance of some of the articles of the UDHR to the situations we are concerned about with here. Uh, I have gone through the, uh, the 30 articles and there are at least six that are relevant uh, to uh, this detention situation on uh, the U.S.-Mexican border. But there are two that I would particularly like to read. There's Article 9. It says, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary arrest, detention, or exile. That's pretty straightforward, I think. There's Article 14. Everyone has the right to seek and to enjoy in other countries asylum from persecution. That, I think, is also relevant. So what I'm proposing is that uh, you, uh, when you uh, agitate, uh, whether by writing letters or uh, talking to people for uh, a resolution, a humane resolution of the, this terrible situation at the American-Mexico border or in other uh, situations where people are being held in concentration camps, and let's use that word. Concentration camps should not be confused with the extermination camps of the Germans, though they, uh, the concentration camps the Germans had evolved into extermination camps, but there's a long history of concentration camps that go back to the 19th century. And what exists at the American-Mexico border are concentration camps. Let's let there be no doubt about it. And what I want to ask you to do, if you write to your representatives or senators or deal in any way uh, with this uh, terrible crisis uh, of humanity is to uh, look at the UDHR and to begin to cite it. And this is in fact what we're uh, aiming to do, uh, our group is aiming to do, uh, and we're giving ourselves essentially five years in the run-up to the 75th anniversary of the uh, UDHR. So the document is relevant, I urge you to read it, and uh, to help make it a force for good in the world. Thank you.